After completing the sign up, you are now ready to set up your company. On the bottom right, you will find our chat support function, where if you have any questions, you can simply direct them here. Company name, type, details, and the company numbers requested are mandatory and important. This is in order for the app to generate complete payslips and statutory forms. If you are not sure what the number means, click on the question mark or see our help center. In case you don't have them at hand, you can also come back later to fill them in. Now it's time to add your employees. It's important to enter all the personal details regarding the employee, including their marital status and children as it will affect their PCB deductions at the end of each month. Please note that address details are optional. The Employment Details tab is where you enter each employee's salary and any recurring payroll items. For example, if you want to add a monthly travel allowance, you select that payroll item from the relevant category and simply key in the amount. Only add payroll items here that are recurring on a month-to-month -month basis as the app will assume it is still year-end and it thus will affect your staff's PCB. You also indicate here whether the payroll item is applicable to unpaid leave. Next, you need to enter the employee's EPF PCB number, and SOXO category details. After this, we can add previous payslips of employees for this year for both their previous or current employer. It is important to update this section prior to running payroll, otherwise it might result in the employee overpaying PCB. Once you have created a record for each of your employees, you can invite them to sign up for the app. This allows them to see their own payslips and apply for leave. Make sure you add all of your employees. Under the Leave tab, you will find Public Holidays in green, the current day in yellow, and your staff's leave. Your staff can easily apply for leave via the app or you can also add the leaves manually. So it's time of the month and you want to run payroll. In the overview, you can see the salary and other payroll items for each employee. Any unpaid leave that was recorded during the month is also automatically calculated for each employee here. For additional payroll items that are not recurring on a month-to-month -month basis, this is where you can add them, for example, a bonus. When you're done making edits, your payroll is almost ready. The next steps are just review steps. In step two, you will be able to see the summary report as well as previews of payslips. If you notice something that requires to be edited, you can always return to step 1 to do this. You can also edit an employee's profile before returning to run payroll. In step 3, you will see the list of employees and the amount that needs to be paid and also the total amounts of the statutory bodies. Once you're happy with the total amounts and don't need to make any further edits, you can complete your payroll. Note that if you submit payroll and only realize later that you need to make a change, you will have to contact us so that we can undo the payroll for you. You can always access the payroll summary and payslips here. When your payroll file is ready, the button will change. You can refresh the page after a few seconds and the file will be ready. From here, you can download the payroll zip file which contains all your completed PCB and SOXO forms to submit to the relevant statutory bodies and an iAccount file that you can upload. Your payslips and payroll summary report are also included as PDFs in case you want to print them out rather than emailing them. From the payroll history page, you can easily email payslips to your staff. Make sure you've added each employee's email to their profile. Future payrolls should be a lot easier to run because all your company details and employees are set up 
and you even have the last payroll info to use if you want.